going to kick off our project symposium. Thank you for being here to be part of this event as advisors and friends of the project, project team members and speakers. I'm Dr. Julie Smith. I'm the project director of the Animal Disease Biosecurity Coordinated Agricultural Project. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to our symposium. Before we get started, I have a few items of housekeeping. First, I'd like you to please take a moment to note the location of the emergency exits. You'll see a green exit sign. Second, if you're planning to join us for the forum at the Cambria Hotel this evening, there is a shuttle that will run between the Stamp and the Cambria every 10 to 15 minutes between 4.30 and 5.30 p.m. It is a fairly easy walk from here if you're interested in doing that, but you have to navigate your way through campus to the right bridge to cross the street. Dinner will begin at, at 6 p.m. tonight and the forum begins promptly at 7. Third, I'd like to recognize three people who have been critical to organizing the logistics, registration and promotion and facilitation of this meeting. And if Eileen Christiansen, who is just walking down the hall, would come back this way, you need to grab her. <laughs> so Eileen Christiansen is our uh, project coordinator and budget manager extraordinaire. And she's been responsible for coordinating the logistics and all of the meals for the meetings that you're at. And if you have any questions or concerns about the facility, please see Eileen. And if you have any questions regarding reimbursement for attending the, the meeting, please connect with Eileen Christiansen. So Eileen, would you wave in the back, please? So there's Eileen. Second, I'd like to recognize Joanna Cummings. Is Joanna? <laughs> she conveniently stepped out. So Joanna Cummings recently joined our project as a communications professional bringing her graphic design and web design experience with her. And so all of the branding that you see today for our symposium is thanks to Joanna. Third, I'd like to introduce Matt Myers. Matt Myers is standing in the back. He's an expert in dialogue education and he has been helping to uh, design and will be co-facilitating the meetings with me. Fourth, I wanna point out that today's sessions are being live streamed and recorded for future viewing. And that's courtesy of John Blue with Truffle Media Networks. Um, and I do wanna point out, in case you haven't let your friends and colleagues know that they can watch this on the live stream, send them to our symposium website. It's adbcapsymposium.com. Go to the first blog post and it has the link to the live stream so they can watch along with us. Please don't do that in this room. Don't watch the live stream in this room. Um, but folks who are not here um, can certainly check in with what we're doing. It's important because of the streaming and recording that as we get to the parts of the meeting where we want your engagement and we want your questions and comments, that you wait and be patient until there's a microphone in your hand. And we will remind you, but it's important that that microphone be really close to your mouth. You have to hold it on your chin to be heard. And we're gonna ask that you please give your name before you start your question or comment. Um, Danielle Farley, would you raise your hand? Danielle will be helping get that microphone to you, so please uh, let her know that you're wanting the microphone and wait till you have it before you start speaking. Uh, I think the last item of housekeeping has to do with how to get on the Wi-Fi, so we have posted the uh, username and the uh, long randomly generated password on the uh, flip charts on the wall. So if you uh, need any help with that, you can uh, check with Matt. All right, anything else housekeeping wise? All right, let's get started. So what you're gonna see today is the culmination of work that started four years ago, four years and a month ago. And it was a little over five years ago that I began pulling together a team to join together on a proposal in response to an RFA. And that was in the food security challenge area through the USDA NIFA AFRI competitive grants program. At that time, I seized the opportunity to expand on previous work I had done 
bringing multiple disciplines together, social sciences and animal science, to improve agricultural biosecurity. For this proposal, I invited experts in animal health, economics, communication, education, evaluation, game theory, big data, and policy to tackle the problem of disease spread in animal populations. And we set out to do this from the angle of understanding what, uh, what influences and drives human decision making and behavior. Because when you get down to it, it's not the animal's choice to move from place to place or be exposed to disease. It's because of how production systems are designed, the choices made by management, the choices made by individual animal caretakers. I'm supposed to advance the slide here. So our team comes from a, a wide range of institutions. Um, so it's a big multi-institutional, multidisciplinary project. And what is interesting to a lot of people is that my collaborators had not worked with me on a project like this before. And in fact, some had not even met me before signing on to our project proposal. So let's just say we were ecstatic to hear, to learn that our project proposal had been selected for funding. And this was my first experience leading a large multi-institutional project. And it's been quite a ride. There have been a few bumps in the road, primarily of the administrative type that plague large continuation projects. But once you get started going down the road and you start picking up speed and you find that you are soaring above your greatest expectations where, for where this project might go, that is what has made it truly worthwhile. It's been a truly rewarding experience and I thank every one of my team collaborators for joining me on this effort. <clears throat> and it's my pleasure today to be able to showcase the work of my collaborators on the project. We call it the Animal Disease Biosecurity Coordinated Agricultural Project, or ADB-CAP for short. And I just have a couple list slides that list out all of the collaborators by discipline or part of the project they're associated with. You'll be hearing from a number of these folks today. Um, but first what I'd like to do is have all of the team members who are here in the room stand up. If you're a member of the team now, please stand up. I want everyone else to look around and see these folks. You'll be hearing from some of them, and I hope that you'll get to know us over the course of the day. So, <clears throat> I'm pleased that we are joined from several stakeholders, some of who supported this project proposal from the very start, some who have followed our project as it has gone along. Uh, some of you may be attending today out of curiosity or because of the recommendation from a colleague of yours, I'm, I'm really glad that you are all here. And I'm very pleased to have several USDA NIFA program leaders with us. I've asked Dr. Michelle Colby to make a few remarks this morning. Michelle, I want to uh, let you know, got her undergraduate degree in animal science not far from here at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. And she did her doctorate in veterinary medicine at the Virginia Maryland Regional College of Veterinary Medicine and did further training in epidemiology and as a postdoctoral research scholar. Her career has revolved around coordinating and directing research and development, uh, research and development programs related to homeland security and agricultural defense. Michelle is now the national program leader for animal biosecurity with the USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture. Please join me in welcoming Michelle Colby. Good morning, everyone. And I have to have Julia write that down because she did a much better job with my short bio than I do. Um, I'd like to uh, echo Julie's welcome uh, to everyone today and thank you all for your participation, past, present, and future, um, and your active collaboration in this important topic of animal biosecurity. NIFA has more than 20 active projects in this area um, with funding totaling over $10 million. Uh, this includes both capacity and competitively funded projects. 
On the competitive side, these projects range from conference grants uh, to this large cap grant um, and include, but also include small business funding and workforce development focused projects. Multidisciplinary projects like this one um, will continue to be emphasized. Um, we, as most of you know, we've eliminated the challenge grant um, program, but we've, uh, inc we've initiated a new sustainable ag systems program that wraps in most of the challenge topics. <clears throat> and so this, there's a home for projects like this under SAS, um, which, and if you actually look at the explanatory notes for 2020, um, they specifically call out agricultural biosecurity. So I think that's a very promising sign for projects like this one. Um, this emphasis is continued through the introduction of new, new projects in the AFRI Foundational and Applied Sciences RFA, such as IDEAS, uh, which stands for Interdisciplinary Engagement in Animal Systems, that will support new interdisciplinary projects focused on animal and veterinary medical sciences supporting food and agricultural production. And that's in the 2019 RFA that was just released last week. As we grow our portfolio in biosecurity, um, the broader emphasis on ag agricultural biosecurity that integrates the entire farm to fork spectrum um, is our eventual goal. Perhaps not always in an individual project, um, but the model used here um, where tools have been developed in one side of the spectrum, but then a dialogue is initiated to look at expanding that into the other piece, parts of the spectrum is a great example of the types of projects we'll be looking at. Um, and of course, one of NIFA's strengths and one of the strengths of this project, um, this CAP project, and something we will continue to emphasize as we move forward in our, with our biosecurity portfolio is the integration of research, extension, and education, um, ensuring that the research investments that we make with taxpayer dollars don't just re produce results, but those results are also translated either into the field or into the classroom. Um, so thank you again for your participation today, and I'm really looking forward to the discussions. Thank you, Michelle. This morning's sessions will highlight what we have learned regarding behavioral intentions and risk perceptions of livestock producers. We'll break for lunch at 11.30, and then this afternoon we'll take a look at simulations of how biosecurity behaviors of members of the Livestock Production Network affect spread of disease. And we'll also have a brief introduction to the communication and outreach efforts associated with the project. Interspersed within sessions and between sessions this afternoon, we have time set aside to engage with your questions and ideas. We're especially interested in hearing what aspects of our work excite you and where you see applications of findings or approaches in areas that are important to you. As you will see, many of our initial efforts through this grant have addressed swine industry biosecurity concerns. However, our efforts are not directed exclusively at one commodity, and we are open to hearing what questions or challenges should be addressed in others. In addition to what you share with us today, we will be inviting you to complete a survey regarding your experience with today's symposium overall. This is in addition to a survey you will receive specific to efforts of the SEGS lab, which I will introduce shortly. <laughs>